You are listening to Radio Yastrava. Radio Yastrava. Radio Yastrava. Radio Yastrava. Radio Yastrava. Tune in to the leading internet radio station in the mother city, Radio Yastrava. For more information, log on to our website, which is www.radioyesterover.co.za. Radio Yesterover, ons stasi, ons talent, ons mense. WhatsApp ons by 064-536-9095. Talk to us. Die dang ruk hier. Butchers Market offers the best quality, locally sourced and 100% halal meats. Visit our store at Sanbury Square Mall. Contact us at 021-565-0499 TPM for your halal meats. That right baby you are tuned into the special edition show man and if you guys are tuned in again you guys will recognize the voice the voice of the one and only Mr Vital and I'm going to do a quick telephonic interview with Mr Ricardo McKenzie uh, without further ado guys I'm calling him right away Hello 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 is this Mr Ricardo McKenzie Uh, speaking loud. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, good. Oh, good. Uh, are you doing this afternoon? I'm great, thanks. Can't complain this afternoon. Okay, okay. Uh, seeing that we are less than two weeks away from the election of 2024, what does a normal day look like in the DA at the moment? At the moment, um, massive numbers every single day in every community. We're making sure that we want to get all voters out on election day mm. and encouraging them to vote DA to keep the Western Cape DA. Sure, powerful. So, if you do retain the Western Cape, what will your focus be for the next five years? Our focus, as you know, we are a job-loving uh, a province. We love jobs in the Western Cape with a job-loving Premier, Ellen Wendy. Mm. Uh, our focus in our manifesto is 800,000 new jobs, sure. 1,300 law enforcement officers. We want to cut load shedding by four stages. We are building schools faster. Our colleague David Mania is incredibly good, and we deliver quality education in the Western Cape. We want to continue with our fight for devolution because we want to make sure the trains are running. Yes. We are building world-class health facilities. And we obviously a clean and innovative government as the DA-led Western Cape government. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, I hear you, Mr. McKenzie. Um, unemployment is uh, heavy. It's one of our biggest crises at the moment in South Africa. Uh, we have a major unemployment ca- crisis. So what is your response to this crisis? Well, our response over the last five years, we've made the largest net employment contribution. Uh, nearly 78% of all jobs created in South Africa mm. were created in the Western Cape. This means that out of five jobs, nearly four of every five jobs created in the country were created in the Western Cape. That is the difference between the ANC state-led approach to job creation and the DA's pro-growth job uh, uh, approach. National government has been unable to generate meaningful employment for millions of South Africans because they are misguided in their approach. By contrast, here in the Western Cape, uh, we believe in economic investment so that businesses can grow and create real and sustainable jobs. Just this afternoon, I was in Mitchell's Plain, where another business announced that they're going to come to Mitchell's Plain, investing with a, a, a DA-supported uh, company in Mitchell's Plain, r Labs, and they're going to bring 30 new jobs to Mitchell's Plain. Mm. That coupled with our uh, growth for jobs strategy announced in July 2023, it's exactly how we're hoping and working to grow the economy between 4 and 6% every single year. 
uh, resulting in us being a trillion rand economy by 2035 and hopefully create an estimated 800,000 new jobs in the Western Cape. This extraordinary growth uh, is made possible by us as the Western Cape government, uh, investing with business, uh, focusing on infrastructure. Over the next three years, the Western Cape government will invest nearly 32 billion rand in fixed infrastructure, um, including uh, uh, capital growth and obviously in agricultural infrastructure. Our partner, the city of Cape Town, is already investing uh, in infrastructure far outpacing the rate of any other metro in the country. Over the next three years, the city will alone invest 50 billion rand. That's almost as much as Johannesburg and Durban combined. There is the difference between the DA-led government and the ANC-led government. So the Western Cape is well on track, and we're obviously maintaining credible road network. Our colleagues in the infrastructure department is investing heavily in our road infrastructure, spending nearly 2.1 billion rand on maintaining and upgrading our roads in the Western Cape. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Um, crime remains a major concern, though, however. And what is the Western Cape government doing to make rural areas, communities like ours, safer? How are you guys working alongside SAPS to achieve this? Well, what, what can I just say? The, the Western Cape government has launched our Western Cape Safety Plan. Uh, led by Premier Indy. That's one of the first things he did when he became Premier of the Western Cape five years ago. The Western Cape Safety Plan is a data-centered, evidence-based approach to addressing crime. Uh, This data-led approach informs our policing strategies and ensures that limited resources available from national government are better utilized. We know that we are severely under-resourced by the ANC-led government And our program, our data-led Western Cape uh, safety-led approach, our Western Cape safety plan, Mm. is there to augment and assist national government. Our LEAP uh, Enforcement Environment Plan, which is our LEAP offices, in partnership with the city of Cape Town, started nearly four years ago with 500 law enforcement officers deployed to four priority areas. We have since expanded it as the Western Cape government to 13 priority areas with 1,300 LEAP officers deployed. That partnered with our city of Cape Town, the Eye in the Sky technologies have been introduced to bolster uh, the effectiveness of crime. Our LEAP officers have done incredible work, uh, managed obviously run by the city of Cape Town under our watch. Mm -hmm. They've made over 27,000 arrests and they've taken more than 554 illegal firemen of the street. In those areas where our LEAP officers have been deployed, there's been a notable decrease in crime, and that coupled with our provincial rural safety uh, 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 units in areas like Swartland and Overstrand, with our wonderful K9 units in the Swartland, Overstrand, and the Mossel Bay regions, have contributed in combating crime in those areas. In addition, we've got incredible neighborhood watches. We've got nearly 477 accredited neighborhood watches in our province, uh, compromising nearly 15,000 patrollers. I personally have worked with our neighborhood watches the um, other night in Mitchell's Plain. And can I also say our neighborhood watches have done incredible work. We all mm. can remember during the 2021 July riots, uh, uh, our SAPs could not do this on our own. So our neighborhood watches has been supporting during that period our South African police uh, um, services as a force multiplier. Uh, in fact, the independent research by the Institute of Security Studies have shown that the, of the four provinces evaluated, Gauteng, the Eastern Cape, KwaZulu-Natal, and the Western Cape, the Western Cape is the only province where the murder rate has declined over the last five years. Uh, We're using technology uh, and our neighborhood watches to assist us in fighting crime, and that's what we want to continue doing over the next five years. What we're doing as the Western Cape government to prevent crime before it occurs, 
We've implemented the VPU, the Violent Prevention Unit, which seeks to address the root causes of crime. It involves various role players from across government and civil society targeting specific areas that require an array of societal intervention. Mm -hmm. The Western Cape government, no, we can't do this on our own. So we're working with civil society and the whole of society to address these challenges. I hear you. Thank you so much for that answer. Um, load, sh- load shedding as well is, is one of our huge concerns as well. It's an issue for our uh, economy, uh, economy as well because sometimes when a lot of the, the businesses have to close because it's load shedding for the two hours. We didn't get load shedding for the last few months though. Um, but do you think ESCOM and the Minister of Electricity can solve the problem? Uh, also, if they can't, where does this leave the Western Cape? Well, I think everybody must just be aware. Let's not take because we have that low shedding the last few weeks as guaranteed for the future. Mm-hmm. We know how the ANC-led government operates, and we know that on the 30th or the 1st, or yeah. as soon immediately possible after that, it's likely that we will have low shedding. Mm-hmm. National government has failed to ensure a reliable supply due to its insistence, insistence on an outdated model of state-led power generation. Load shedding is a direct result of a corrupt and incapable ANC-led national government. The solution to South Africa's electricity crisis must come from increased power generation outside of ESCOM. They have failed to deliver electricity since load shedding started nearly two decades ago. We should not, because we had not had load shedding for the last few weeks, expect that it's going to continue. We know how national government operate. We know the, the incapability of them. So the last few weeks, we appreciate it. South Africans appreciate it, but that will not be the norm. In the Western Gate government, we believe that we should allow the private sector suppliers to emerge, which will allow for more competition, therefore improve services, increase supply, and obviously lower energy prices, because that's what people need. We need cheaper electricity, because times are tough, and we know people cannot afford all these higher cuts caused by national government. To tackle the devastating energy crisis, as the Western Cape government, we've set up a Western Cape Energy Council, led by Premier Ellen Windy, Mm -hmm. The council uh, is driving our uh, approach, the multi-pronged approach to easing and eventually ending load shedding in the future. That is the best way to do it. Our Western Cape Energy Resilience Program will enable the province to reduce its dependence on ESCOM, which, as you know, has been very unstable for energy. And the province is well on its way to becoming the first load shedding free province in the country. Led by Premier Ellen Windy, around 7 billion rand will be spent over the next three years by the provincial government and municipality to make the Western Cape energy resilient, away from the ANC-led ESCOM. The Municipal Energy Resilience Initiative has developed and built capacity across municipalities to implement the renewable energy projects and solutions. This initiative so far has seen the successful request from the information for more than 100 potential energy renewal projects. That is what we do as the Western Cape government. Already 2,000 megawatts is in the market and more is coming on stream. The province is well on its way on meeting our target of generating 5,700 megawatts of energy by 2035. The DA runs city of Cape Town. It's on track to meet its target of protecting its customers against the first four stages of load shedding. We already know that because of our heavy investment as the DA-led city of Cape Town, we stabilize Stenbrest. What it means that our family and friends in other provinces are experiencing load shedding in the DA-led city of Cape Town, we already a stage uh, two stages below load shedding. We don't, when they have load shedding at times, we don't even have load shedding here in Cape Town. That is what happens when you invest in maintenance and you invest in infrastructure. That is the difference between where the DA govern and when the ANC govern. For the year ahead, the city will spend 480 million rand 
on its load shedding protection plan, which includes 83 million rands for the Power Euros demand program, 377 million for the continuous investment in the Stienbras hydro pump station. That is the pump station that gives us that buffer, that additional stage one or stage two protection that we have here in Cape Town when the other cities and other provinces and the rest of the countries go into load shedding. That is what good investment does by the DA-led government. And the 377 million rand that will be invested in the Brass Hydro Power Station will protect us going forward in the future. When the ANC reinstates, the ANC government calls the additional load shedding to be reinstatement in the future. The additional 30 million rand will ensure continued optimization of Stienbrass load shedding. To add to this, if I can continue, over the next three years, the city will spend an estimated 722 million rand on independent power purchases, including dispatchable energy to be deployed at peak times, and 4 billion rand on upgrading and maintaining the city's electricity grid. Protecting the grid is so important because you know when load shedding happens, you switch the national government under the ANC switch, obviously ESCOM led, switch it on and off, and that has a severe impact on the grid and has a potential to damage the grid and cause the grid to collapse. What the DA led city of Cape Town is doing, and our partner, obviously us as the Western Cape government working with them, we're investing in maintaining the grid and stabilizing the grid, which will ensure we become energy secure in the future. Our investment is critical because the reason we are sitting with load shedding is because of the ANC's corruption, the ANC mismanagement, and the ANC's failure to invest in maintenance and repair. And if we, the risk of that, of what that has done, is caused us to collapse and cause us to sit at load shedding at the moment. So our municipalities where the DA govern, George, Mossel Bay, Sterenbush, Saldana, are also investing large amount of money in our collective effort to achieve energy resilience. As the Western Cape government, we've also allocated 90 million rand to municipalities to ensure that critical water and sewage infrastructure is protected during load shedding, particularly for our municipalities that are high. So what it means when the load shedding happens, that our pump station works and we're pumping up to ensure the sewage don't run into the street. When it comes to uh, energy and investing in that, our need 95 capacity to services are protected during load shedding. In other provinces, when they have load shedding, their clinics are not working, their hospital services are not working, but all of them. Here in the Western Cape, 109 are protected and 47 clinics have completed their inverter installation and also 10 hospitals have been exempted up to stage 6 load shedding. That's what good governance does in the Western Cape. On top of this, the Western Cape government has delivered nearly 4,000 load shedding relief packs. This is lightning and charging solutions to assist people with disabilities and victims by The Western Cape government will continue to deliver over 96,000 Hello, can I hear you? Be in there, oh. even when the lights go out. Okay. okay. Can you still hear me? I just broke up there for a second. They had to end. But you can hear me? I can tell you a friend. Okay. Okay, thank you so much for that uh, informed answer. A number of... Um, in this 2024 election, I've seen a lot of parties. I think there's more than 350 parties running. Uh, they just popped out of nowhere, this election. And they're not a play in the Western Cape, I would say. But do you guys feel any pressure from any party here in the Western Cape as the DA? Can I just say that these small parties are not directing their voters against the DA when the real threat to our country is the ANC. Then there are also parties like the PA, 
We have time and a time and again said they would go into a coalition with ANC. We need voters to guard against voting for parties that would hand over the Western Cape to the ANC. Because a vote for these small parties is a vote for the ANC. As soon as the election is over, they're going to take your vote and give it to the ANC. And that's not what voters want. Voters want good governance, the voters want good service delivery, and voters want a stable government. And we urge urging voters to not give their votes to the small party because they are going to give their votes to the ANC. I hear you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, it seems like we are running out of time, Mr. McKenzie. Do you have anything to say in closing of? Yes, can I just say, job is a very important part to us at the Western Cape. We believe in jobs, we love jobs, and we enable job creation in the Western Cape. I recently ensured to ensure that workers have access to jobs. We've uh, expanded our job seeker travel voucher program which currently offers more than 180,000 free bus rides to interviews. That means if you have a confirmed interview, you can go to westerncape.gov.za and type in your details. If your company is a partner with us and urge whoever has given you the interview to please talk with us so you can get to that interview free of charge. You cut that cost down to zero to ensure you can get to the interview and hopefully you will get a job. We also have the Year Beyond program that offer quality work experience to over 7,800 Year Beyond since 2019. And the program is now ramped up so that between three and 4,000 youth will benefit from this program. So we're asking the youth, please go to Western Cape, the Gov. Zero, and also to Cape Town, the Gov. Zero, and apply for any youth development program that we as the deal at Western Cape government has out there. We also know students need the opportunities to bursaries. As the Western Cape government, we have the Masikis Way Bursary Program, which is unique to the Western Cape. We have so far supported 856 young people to pursue the dreams of obtaining an opportunity to study in infrastructure, because that way we are spending our money. So we need people to please go study in the infrastructure field. So please go to Western Cape. The gov the ZA and apply for the bursary program and I know our colleagues in the city of Cape Town is also offering those opportunities for students to study um, in the bursary field. So please go to Cape Town the gov the ZA and to Western Cape the gov the ZA. Can I just lastly say, please do not vote for parties that are misdirecting their voters. Vote for the DA so we can keep the Western Cape DA how it blow to ensure good governance and ensure a party that continues to invest in job and job enablement opportunities. The parties like the PA, they time and time again said they will go into coalition with the ANC. A vote for the PA is a vote for the ANC. The ANC that has caused us to be in load shedding, the ANC that has caused the collapse of the South African police service, the ANC that has caused the collapse of ESCOM, the ANC that has caused the collapse of the railway lines, the ANC that has caused the collapse of so many institutions for South Africa. So if you vote for the PA, you vote for the ANC. Please voters, vote for the DA to keep the Western Cape DA. We need voters to guard against voting for parties that will hand over the Western Cape to the ANC. Thank you so much, Mr. McKenzie. You must have a great day, Phil. Thank you so much for availing yourself for about 30 minutes, 25 minutes, just to, 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 to promote the party a bit more. Thank you so much. Uh, best of luck with, with this year's election. Thank you, sir. Uh, have you? Okay. Uh, guys, that was Mr. Ricardo McKenzie uh, from the DA, guys. We are signing up on the special edition show. This was beautiful. Thank you guys for being tuned into the leading internet radio station. I just want to say a uh, big shout out to Ms. Stacia Rocha that's tuned into the leading internet radio station, man. Radio is trophy. Who's the stars? Who's the talent? And hello, as you all get on some means. Radio Silver. Radio is trophy. Radio East River. Radio East River. Oh. 
Hallo, ek is Ellen Windy, Demokratiese Alliantie Weeskaap premierkandidaat. Die Weeskaap werk. Meer werk word hier geskep as in enige ander provincie. Ons maak voldering om misdaad te verminder. En ons werk hard om die eerste provincie te wees wat beetkracht vry is. Hierdie is alles moendlik gemaakt dier ons goeie bestuursrekord. Stem om die Weeskaap DA te hou. Op 29 mei, stem DA. Partij Politieke Advertentie is dier die betrokke partij betaal. Radio East River, Radio East River, Radio East River, Radio East River! Ah, die is eigenlijk een man niet zo mee bro. Hoe zeg ik wat? Wauw, ik zoek nou die. Ah, baby, baby, ik steek wat die baby. In Japan, man, ik sta met die plan. Weer kom als jou, want ik is geblis, man. Die mannen komen met nummers, maar ik kom met die zomer. Jelle komt met kies, maar ik kom met die tonnen. Maar ik denk tussen 26 en alle skills en alle tricks. Ik denk tussen jouw kruk en alle skills. En die boek komt geld te krijgen, is aan mijn DNA. Hey, is aan mijn bloed, is aan mijn bloed. Ik heb mijn dromen gebouwd, zo'n een studio, Mike. Helen, niet meer levels te reach. Ik heb voor de boek instruction stijl. Mijn geld nu levels en stories, even dan maar touch the mic. Kabel is checkbooks, waar they try to balance life. A nice life problems, no my life is boring, money in the morning. I want a big massacre, I don't want the glory. Ah, I just want the feeling. Ah, big, 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 a stick for the day. Ah, big, 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 I'm moving the lines. Ah, big, 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 I got that for the day. Do you want to take your business to the next level? Advertise with Radio Easter River by emailing us at admin at radioeasterriver.co.za. Submissions are now open. 